you're going to be fine. Hello, everyone. It's Jamal Thomas. I'm sorry. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So I have the one and only sane progressive, even though she doesn't like that name now, Debbie Lusignan. Debbie, please say hi to everyone. Welcome Hold to on. I'm turning Soapbox. down my microphone to get and cut and paste the address. I will say hi in just one moment so I can turn it back up. No, do your thing. Do your thing. And Hold let me on. make sure I am up. There we are. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Tis <laughs> I. Tis I. All right. So, yes, we are live. Good. We're live. All right. So, first things, um, I always say thank you to patrons, contributors, and so forth. They already know. And I think most of my audience already knows who you are because most of my audience, I think, love you to death, love you to bits. And even in many cases, there would be something I would say that they would be like, they would have a go at me about, oh, but no. love you about. Oh, no. <laughs> so, they were like, oh, says this. <laughs> um, so there's that. So tell me, what have you been doing since, I, I think the last time I spoke to you was maybe a year ago on the show. So oh, no. what have you been focusing on during the content of that last year or so? Um, let's see, what have I been doing in the past year? Boy, that's a pretty broad time frame. Um, okay, oh, fat, six months or three months. Let, let me, the latest thing that you've been focusing on, because it does seem like, I guess, we I all go through these things. I've been content on my channel a lot um, because I realize um, that we are in a, we really are in a crisis situation in the country right now. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that we need to be getting down to a core foundational perception shift about how we are, 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 are viewing things and how we are deciding to act, uh, because I think we're kind of stuck in a very failed and old mentality and mindset, and it's making us um, kind of uh, impotent, I'm not going to say stupid, but <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in actually being effective to what we want to achieve. And, uh, and, and so much of our, um, our focus is 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 so other oriented if we i can just get this politician or this group of people to think in a different way and behave in a different way then we're going to manifest change and everything will be better so i have been changing everything around to talk about our own role and responsibility taking a look at our own hypocrisies and what keeps us stuck and trying to move outside of that um so it's uh it's it's been you know kind of met with mixed reviews it's people really, <laughs> people really like um you know they like the analysis see they like the breakdown and this person lied about this and this person betrayed us about that and they really like that and um at a certain point it it seems like okay yeah we know they lie they know we know we're being betrayed we know the system is broken but we're not moving beyond what keeps us stuck in it so how does we move outside of it no I, okay so i agree with you on that <laughs> and, and and this is one of the things i guess i love about your channel and the content because i i absolutely agree with you on that the thing is i oh man it is one of those things where you feel like you want to call somebody stupid it's like why are you doing this like from outside <laughs> Like if you're, um, if you've moved to a position of, okay, the the issue is not necessarily this or that politician. The issue is the system itself. You you're you're stuck into this finger trap of sorts, and you believe that doing the same thing is going to get a different result. And I, when you hit that point, you're looking at everyone else like fucking idiots. Like you you want to say that, <laughs> but to be fair, to be fair to those people for the moment, the, these people who at the end of their political analysis would agree with everything that you said and still say you need to vote for Hillary Clinton because that's the best choice in this election. Like we'll still get there and with a straight face say that there's no, there's nothing else to do about that. You're wishing for, you know, ponies and, 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 and rainbows. And so in this particular case, the best choice in this political analysis is voting for this person to get the exact same thing that you've always got. I agree with you, man. I agree with you. The problem is I think it, it's, people don't look at, they believe that they have free will. Meaning they believe that the choices they make are somehow completely detached from the system that they operate from. So we just need a different politician, not we need to change the system itself that creates these particular politicians and our view of thought um, to create this particular world in reality. I agree with you. Right. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. So what's the prescription? And like, so what's the thing to do for something like that? How, if you agree with me that people 
this, the, the, the reason or the things that happen on a, on a larger level are based on how the system itself creates those things. How do you yank people out of that system? Like, how do you yank people up enough to say, look, the problem is the system. You need to understand that the reason why you're acting or the reason why these people act the way they act is because the way the system itself is rigged and set up. How do you yank them out of that context to get them to see that? The first thing is we don't really understand the system. We don't understand what the system is or how it actually operates from. We vest in this superficial way that um, it is presented to us, this theater of the, the Democrats and the Republicans and the good cop and the bad cop. Yeah. And then we have the controlled opposition. Um, and then we have a hope of a, uh, an outside party solution, which can't possibly manifest until we, take, we face the corruption and fraud and way the system is really functioning from within. So, you know, it's not just, it's, it's getting to understand what is actually happening and, 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 and how, how power is, who the power is actually running through, how the power is being implemented, how others are controlled so they are subjugated to that power. The politicians are subjugated. We have a, a mass surveillance system, system. We have a very corrupt system. It's really, I, I liken it to a mob. We are dealing with really more of a mob rule than a government. And it has been usurped for decades behind the scenes from shadow organizations, unelected shadow organizations, um, the CIA, uh, NSA, you know, the, 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 the inception of the Alphabet department. Alphabet soup of agencies, yeah. yeah. Um, they really are wielding the power and they are, uh, and it's, we are so propagandized too not just with news stories that are spun, but news stories that are fabricated and created and are, are, are created out of whole cloth. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard for people to comprehend that it has gone this far. It is very, people, it's very difficult for people to accept how extreme it is. Um, talking in the ways where I actually think that we need to go has been a process of my becoming ostracized. Um, people will not, don't want to join me in pointing out things that I think that need to be talked about. Um, and so it's, it's breaking down and exposing what is really going on. It's something I don't think a lot of people are ready for. I think a lot of people don't really want it. It's a pain. I, I don't, I don't think they can fathom it to some degree. Like one of the th reports that came out showed that I think it was the CIA was trying to create some kind of pretext to attack Fidel Castro. So they were gonna either bomb somewhere in Florida, killing Americans, or create a bomb. Meaning saying, you know, create this out of whole cloth that this particular thing took place so we can create the pretext to kill Castro. Um, our government does some ghastly things. And I, it's, it's weird because the media pretends as if that stuff never takes place, it doesn't exist, there is no such thing. It's like everything that the government reports is exactly the way it is. Then you find out 50 years later or 20 years later, but the media never gets it. Like it's almost like the media has no memory at all of, of anything that's ever taken place. Well, we um, don't. They carry we water. Don't. Yeah, it's not just the media though, it's us. It's us because there are just places that you cannot go. I mean, now, I mean, the mo one of the most obvious ones is 9 11. I mean, yeah. even people like Chomsky throws it under the bus, Hedges won't talk about it, Abby Martin walked away from it. I mean, and I've spent a lot of time uh, researching that, investigating it, and I think it's very clear. You can't get into a whole presentation on 9-11, but I really think that 9-11 was an inside job. It was a false flag. I think it was kind of blatant and obvious, and I think it's really, and, and people still will just speak about that as whispers under our breath. And so we don't deal with what they're doing in real time. And they have amped it up. I mean, and it's happening more and more. It's so beyond Castro. I mean, I remember trying to talk about Las Vegas, which was excruciating. It was one of, I, you know, it's like, I did not cover Las Vegas because I wanted to, I didn't want to. I was uh, told I was a horrible human being. Oh, I was told I didn't have sympathy for the victims. I was told that I was crazy. Um, I tried to reach out to other commentators to tell them my findings. Nobody would listen to me. So you get ostracized in your own thing. And it's like, I don't really, I mean, and I actually think it's very dangerous because I think when you start, um, I mean, my computer was breaking down constantly when I was like working on Vegas. I couldn't, it was like, you know, my, my internet was not working. I just, it just kind of started even almost getting a little creepy. And I, I, I just. Let me say this. 
Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I put my water. <laughs> go ahead. Now, I was saying, from the media standpoint, it's it is to some degree the media. I mean, it is. Don't get me wrong. I understand your component of look. It's human beings also because human beings are the ones who, at the end of the day, make these choices. But I'm making the point that it's not really a choice. If the overwhelming majority of the public, for the most part, is obsequious to what takes place in the media, meaning it's not real unless it comes on some kind of nightly broadcast, then yes, you can say those people are idiots because those people didn't <laughs> look into this stuff and have any kind of historical context beyond a few few years. It, it's if you have a massive establishment that's set in place in order to propagandize the people, and those people, for the most part, eats that stuff. I mean, come on, hey, it, it's. At some point, it's not a free choice of the person. The person is just growing up in a particular society that tells them that this stuff is accurate, this stuff is true, and this stuff is the way you should take it. Um, but I get your point. Your point is fair. That, that at the end of the day, it does, to some degree, the person has to wake up out of that particular thing. No, it's totally on us. It's not, it's, uh, you know, we, you know, when you talk about we get the mo politicians and the media that we deserve, we do. People, every, yeah. I, what I've found in doing this work, is that we think we're outside of it. We think that we have this insight. And I mean, I'm not separating myself of this because it's an awakening process that we all go through. Yeah. It's, um, there is a point of something that we are all attached to, that we, some part of the lie that we have all bought into, and everybody's bought into some part of it if you have been indoctrinated and grown up in this culture. You just have. Yeah. And, and we have our blind spots, and they're called blind spots because we don't see. And so what happens is people can seem really reasonable and willing to until you hit that wall. And we all have our wall of what we go, no, that's too yeah, far outside. It's too uh, far out. It's too far beyond. And it's too, I can't believe that. Or I'm too vested in this idea or this person or this party or this philosophy to let it go. And that's the wall. And that's really where I tell people that that is the work. It's not exterior to, because that is where we, are, we hold on to what fails. And- um, I, I agree. I, and it's funny, you, you mentioned the wall. I, bet, I like this idea of the wall, I like, because you're right. Everybody has a point where they say, okay, even if I think there's something there, I'm not going there. For, for usually the reason is pushback from the society itself. You know, people like don't necessarily like to be ostracized, so they tend not to do things that ostracizes them. Um, th two points. I was one of those people, those YouTubers who you reached out to for the Las Vegas thing. I, I, look, I, I asked in one of the other interviews I had with you is like, how do you know where the floor is? Like, how do you know what the ceiling is? Like, if you're living in a situation of, of I don't necessarily know what's real, how do you put your hand on the ground and say, this is real, this is false? This is kind of one of those points. And I, I, I didn't have this belief that the Las Vegas shooting was, was um, created out of whole cloth. I thought that something did take place there. So it wasn't that I was ignoring. It was more so I just disagreed. I, I, I don't, there's certain points where it's not that I feel that in the, that one was a wall. I agree with you that people consider 9-11 as a wall. They, they hit it head on, myself being one of them, where I, I realized at one point, like, well, wait a minute, to be fair, you don't know if what's true for this particular situation. Like the people who are saying this is, is bogus could be right. It's not one of those things where you have absolute flat fact knowledge of what to explain. You need to be ambiguous on that stuff, particularly if you're seeing stuff where you're like, like that building just fell and nothing hit it. Well, that's because it was hot. It was hot? Yes, it was hot. Like it's stuff like that where you're, and you're, you're, the problem with this is if you believe, you know, it's like if you guys had an honest and earnest investigation on these things, then maybe people would believe you, but they've lost credibility on so many fronts. So when people see issues or problems with a particular argument, they point that out. And it's like, dude, your argument on why that building fell makes no sense. It makes zero sense. Yeah. As, you know, yeah, but the report says there's nothing to see here. Well, now you've made me, you know, th this looks strange to me. Calling off the airplanes on that particular day looks strange to me. Like a lot of this stuff does look strange. So I, I don't, I don't disagree with you. By the same token, I had to sit and watch Michael Tracy talk to Peter Joseph. And half of the conversation is about, why did you say that 9-11 was a false flag? <laughs> it's just like, are you no. kidding me? Are you but kidding it, me? It, I agree with what, you, man. It's what's feeding the crisis, Jamal. You know, uh, Vegas was really painful for me because 
I off, I was very much like other people with those kind of, I kind of dismissed people, anybody who was talking about fake shootings, even though, you know, I'm very much on board that 9-11 was fabricated and it was to, you know, to advance these wars and the civil rights violations and the rollbacks that they've done. I could not fathom, I couldn't fathom how they would do these things and why they would do these things. And so I kind of dismissed that entire group of people as, Kind of like the 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 fringe conspiracy of like the real you know like the ones who discredit the real conspiracy. I did it myself, and then I did Vegas, and I I went deep in. I spent twelve hours a day going in, and I'm seeing that they have literally you can see rescue dummies on CNN. You can see fake bodies, rescue dummies instead of people being wheeled around. Yeah. You can see all the rescue scenes without a drop of blood. You can see no rescue vehicles being used. You can, you you see the people there who are supposedly the victims who don't have gunshot wounds, who don't have medical equipment. It was so badly done. It was so in your face, obvious, and it broke my heart because I, and I went deep in, I was like identifying like, you know, the questions of how they fake victims. I actually got taken off YouTube um, and lost my live streaming ability because I was answering those questions because that's like, well, how would they fake it? And I was like, this is how they do it. And I was showing it. It's like, they took my video down midstream, wouldn't let me stream anymore. That's when I lost my live streaming ability. And I think it was because they've never censored me before. It was because I was answering a question that nobody understands. and so. I started, you know, what have I been doing the past six months? I've been looking at that kind of stuff. The stuff where angels- I, 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 don't, I, don't think, look, I don't think you're crazy for looking at this stuff and saying, oh my God, this looks fake to me. I don't think you're crazy for it. And no, YouTube should not be taking down videos. I, I don't care what the person is putting out. It, allow your platform to be your platform. If people want to aggregate around it, they will aggregate around it. I, I guess my thing is, it's in the same way you look at this stuff and you delve deep into it, you can understand who somebody who hasn't necessarily delved deep into that in the way that you have, meaning focused on a particular point, doesn't necessarily get that. Yes, in the past, the United States has faked certain things, even you know, flying a false flag in, in Iraq to try to get them to shoot down an American plane and create the pretext for a war. They, we do these things, toppling governments. We do these things, putting in dictators. We do these things. So it doesn't necessarily blow my mind that something on a mass scale would take place. I guess my feeling is I, I, there needs to be somewhere where I can put my feet on the ground. And in trying to put my feet on the ground in certain places, there are certain things that seemed, I don't know what the end result would be. Like, I don't know necessarily know what they're getting out of this. Like, and so you tell me, what do you believe that they're getting from, from in your words, faking a false flag in regards to the Las Vegas shooting? Well, I mean, you know, the the, the the Vegas shooting was pretty simple. I mean, the, it's it's the, the it's an expansion of mass surveillance. I mean, the people, the, the the core investors in the surveillance group and the Department of Homeland Security were the ones. Um, you know, they're they're trying to get security scanners everywhere, not just hotels. The, the, the next day after Vegas happened, they had a full display out in one of the other hotels about how they were going to roll out this new technology and these security scanners. And the people who are, you know, involved in, you know, the, the, the monetary connections with Mandalay Bay and Sheldon Adelson and how that all weaves together, you can see it. But overall, it is a, you know, what is the, is there a larger agenda? to what is going on. And that is really what is very difficult for people to understand that this is not, there is a means of a pre-planned way to keep the population in fear, to keep us surveyed, to keep us accepting more and more rollbacks of our rights or restrict, uh, restrictions on our speech, our movements, mass surveillance everywhere we go, making these things seem normal. Um, and uh, it, it's uh, so it's it's really not so far out as to why they would do these things. Um, uh, it's just I completely understand what you're saying, Jamal. It's very difficult. I if if I had not spent twelve hours a day for a month researching it to the level that I researched it personally, I would not just listen to somebody else and acquiesce that what they were saying was real. 
it took me doing that. But what happened is, and I think a lot of people who do take the time to do this research and they kind of break down a wall and realize that that we, we are even actually more extreme than we think we are. And the things that are being, the directives that are being put in place and the propaganda is, is, is probably a bit to a wider, more sinister goal. It's, uh, you know, a lot of my videos has been to, not even to try to convince more people of what I'm saying is true. There is a bunch of people already in the place that I am in. And where that brings you uh, is, I, I just think we're ahead of other people. I think I think the truth always catches up. I think it'll out eventually. But I think there has been this ostracized bit of people who are actually are very awakened and understanding threats that other people don't see and understanding the mechanisms, what's happening. And I've been trying to speak to those people because it is a very, very ostracized and lonely place to be. Um, you can't even talk in the terms of the reality which you research because before you, you know, it's like I can have great evidence. I mean, great evidence and great cases and really, really well thought out arguments. 95% of people will not even listen to me because they're like this. They're like, you're crazy. This can't be true. And so that's how you start to move through the world. And I've watched it with the people who have come along with me. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like, watching a movie where you know who the bad guys are and you want to tell people and warn them and everybody's cheering for the bad guys and it's like <laughs> i please stop and it's like you know I, it's it's a feeling of helplessness sometimes it's it's hard you we grow up in we grew up in a system and in the system that we grow up in we're told you know taught implicitly and explicitly certain ideals um things you should shoot for things you should reach for, reach for. Uh, that is reverberated back to you based on the system itself, meaning if I could acquire more capital, then I can buy more stuff. Meaning I, I, I am told in the system itself that behaving and acting a particular way rewards me for behaving and acting a particular way. I tend to think this stuff goes in the line of who's paying who, meaning having this thing of cash flowing through the process. Now, under that model, I, I think the most terrifying thing is people know that. Like, so if, if you ask any random person, do you believe this particular politician is bribed? The person will say yes. And that's terrifying because it's, it means that they're aware to some degree, maybe not necessarily on the level that you are, but they're aware to some degree that these people are bought, these people are bribed, and yet they're still functioning in that system, understanding that that system is rigged in a particular way. That's terrifying to me because it allows, it, it's a certain level of complacency to, to, understand that the U.S. government has done certain things. I guess my point is, I don't want you to feel ostracized based on my show or based on my reaction to it. I, I honestly just- well, I don't feel ostracized by you. I, oh, I just okay. I feel, I feel ostracized by awakening to certain things that I have spent a lot of time researching to and understanding these things that I didn't once vast in as real um, yeah. are, um, I think are, true and that that there are things that are happening that we you know that, that the vast majority of people don't understand and don't understand are happening and so when you come to that point just to be at that point is to be in a place of ostracization outside of a majority group think that that can't comprehend the kind of things that you are trying to talk about um it, that's terrifying i mean it, because that means that for the most part it's not based on what's true like like you could tell people what's true, and those people will still say, "Yeah," but they don't. It, it's 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 uncomfortable to deal with certain things. I put it that way. Um, they believe that they have a working political system, that their elections are honest and straightforward, that the Supreme Court is being honest and straightforward, that they're not political actors, and these guys are checking the political system, and that the troops are out fighting for their freedoms, <laughs> murdering people abroad, fighting for their freedoms. Um, and you're telling them, no, really, those guys are not out there fighting for your freedoms. They're fighting for a top 1% that's selling these guys military contracts in order to make massive amounts of cash at your expense. It's like what you believe of as your world is not true. And you're trying to get people to deal with that particular reality, that the, that the system itself that they've been taught to believe in does not work in their interest. Yeah, that's not the easiest thing for people it's to do. It's not a popular with. message. 
Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not, not a popular message. It's like, like, like you're, you're a 40 year old or 50 year old hits your show and they're like, what? What is this woman talking about? Yeah. I was taught that, that these guys were honorable gentlemen who just have these political discussions that Paul Ryan is the brain trust of the Republican Party. And he's just out there fighting for Republican ideals. Like, it's like, these are the things that we've been taught our entire life. And you're telling us something that that's, not, you know, there's something different than that. Well, yeah. I, just try, I just try to go where things bring me. I try, I try not to be vested in any, anything as having to be the way it is. You know, it's like, you know, so that I, I, I'm constantly adjusting to what is mirrored back to me. So if I yeah. see my pol my political awakening has been hitting this point of nothing changes doing the things that we've continuously done. And it's like, do I want to really be still be invested in in, in a political process that I don't think works? Like I, I don't understand the argument that some people make. Look, let me say it this way, because I think this is where we divide. I, I I agree with everything you say in regards to the way the system works and everything else. Um, I agree, even agree with you to the point of saying people need to have the capacity to pull themselves out of a system that doesn't work. Meaning, if you know it's not working, it's like if you know it's not in your best interest, if you know these people are bought, if you know these people are killing people abroad, if you know these things, what strategy, like what, what honest strategy are you using to say, yes, you still need to vote for these people because you have to work for the system itself? So where do you diverge from me, Jamal? I'm interested. I, I, I think I diverge on you in the standpoint that I don't think the system is completely destroyed and gone. Like, I think that system is still there. I think the architecture of that system is still in place. It may be rusted. It may have joints that leak. Uh, all that stuff is true. It may be ossified in many of the places um, that you would typically need to get things done. But I think it's there. I think it, it's, it's there providing that there's enough public involvement in the process. Meaning, you have pitchforks or dollars. I don't think you get both. I think you have pitchforks or dollars. Those things work in complete opposites of one another. And for all intents and purposes, you've only had dollars. The public has been completely out of the process. For, for whatever reason, it has been completely out of the process. So that's the system that the public gets. The public gets what the public settles for. I, I think I diverge on this idea that that system is still there. That system just needs to be taken. And yes, I know <laughs> it's not... Um, I think you should vote for people who you believe represent your interests. And I think you disagree with me on this. I think in your, in, you would make the case that, well, no, it just doesn't work. It, it's broken. It just, it's well, who are you going to vote for? Who, who are you voting for? And, 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 and what are our concessions? I mean, let's look at what happened with the right. draft. That's, that's OK. Go for it. Go for it. There, that's I what mean, it boils down to, the, the argument of the reformers versus the revolt. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, the election. I, I, I'm not going to do this if any but me, people if people who watch this show know my work or if, if, yeah, 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 if somebody who's Absolutely. watching this for the first time you can go and see a year and a half worth of documentation of how the election was rigged from sea to shining sea. Right. Sanders' campaign actively locked that out, would not acknowledge people who were trying to warn him that this was happening. He went against his own election attorneys who were saying don't certify these results because they're being they're fraudulent. And Just to be clear, we're talking about Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> Just Sanders. to be clear. And, I mean, and, because, and because you're right. If, if you're saying, who do you vote for? I think the like, left has to vote for it. And so what did we see in the wake of that? So Sanders goes around. Not only didn't he fight it, then he endorses Cl Clinton, which was bad enough. But then he goes and becomes a lead spokesman. He gets hired by the DNC. And he gets the lead thing on the media to go around and shill a lie around Russia to blame Russia for what the DNC did to him and his constituents. And people are trying to draft him. That's because true. That's true. It's like, that is insane. Uh, that is like not logical. That is like the person who is lying to cover up the crime you want as your leader. And That's true. That's nuts. And there is no like, you know, and it's like that's but he's got a good policy. Well, you're never going to get a policy when they completely rig an election system with a collusion. It wasn't just the DNC. It was the deep state. It was the media. They were all involved in it. So this the whole thing is gone. They took it. They Now, you think it was bad before the Department of Homeland Security has now taken over the critical infrastructure and you got the people working on election reform to be James Woolsey, who's the head of this Clinton CIA. 
and Jake Braun, who is the friggin, uh, who, who was um, the uh, uh, D Department of Homeland Security liaison for Obama. These are the people who are going to reform your elections to ensure that there is never another Bernie Sanders or even a Trump again. Yeah. And so you're going to go. That, vote. that part I agree with you on. I, I don't. There's no means to do it. And what are we voting for? What are we voting for? What are we trying to preserve? This system is so. If you look at it, you look at we are we are a country that has a for profit killing model as the foundation of the largest industry we still have in this country. Manufacturing weaponry. It's a for it's a killing for profit business model. It is based on an exploit, exploitive premise of, you know, capitalism, which always turns into oligarchy and this kind of fascism, because anytime you have something where you have something that is predatory and is, is, is based on, you know, treating other people as means to extract instead of beings to empower, this is what you get. And so we keep wanting to tweak around it, not understanding the core premise of what we are trying to, what, what what system are you even trying to save? Maybe the system can be saved. Is it something that should be propped up? Because no, it, no, I think I it's think manifesting it's to its natural end. I think this is what you're going to say. No, so I agree. When something manifests to its natural end, I understand it's very human nature. Change is fearful. We don't have a clear way that something else can be different. But I think it speaks to the level of how myopic our thinking has become that when something is broken this bad and is creating this kind of inequality, misery, despondency, fear, recordicide, that you don't be like, oh, oh, you know, it's like I can think that there could be a different way of humans manifesting in the world. We can't even think that way. Because this is the only way we are trained to think. That's what I'm talking about. How myopic. We, can, we don't even know how to think outside of what we have been brainwashed into. Agreed. We are like, really, we are, we are in the matrix. We, and we keep ourselves there. And we, and, and, and we think we're so aware. We are so reduced in our own humanity by these very, very narrow viewpoints. I don't no, know. I agree. No, I Look, I, I agree. So <laughs> there's a lot of that I agree. In fact, I agree with the overwhelming majority of that. Um, which I always say you're terrifying, particularly in an argument when you're talking about somebody from the left. Because it it's not that I disagree with, I think, your premise. I, I fundamentally agree with your premise. The, the problem is the system itself. The system itself creates certain incentives that propagate the system itself. And, and again, you're right, oligarchs, anytime you have a system where you have cash, you know, the system is ensconced in cash. The people with the cash are going to get their way in that system. It's like getting to the point where you're bribing politicians, like outright bribery. You've had, um, what's the guy named Clobber, the guy with no neck, the screaming that, you know, he told Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi to shut up about saying the word billionaire. Think about that. Shut up about class. Shut up about class. Or I'll take your money away from you. He's on TV doing this. Like, this is not hidden in the shadows. This is some billionaire plutocrat foaming at the mouth, screaming without a net that he's telling Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. I called Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi up and told him to shut up about class. What if the topic is class? Meaning, what if the topic is capitalism itself? I've essentially neutered Democrats in having this conversation. Same thing said about Republicans. I, I'll make the point that Republicans are not your saviors in the same way that Democrats are not your saviors. Donald Trump is only in this for Donald Trump. He's not in this to save your life. So I firmly agree with you. All this system is somewhat corrupt in the way that this goes. What are we trying to save? So you you hit upon something that I think is right. That how do you get people out of a system that they've been ensconced to believe that this is the way the world is? Meaning this is not a system you're functioning in. This is just the way things are. This is just the way human beings interact with human beings when you let human beings go in a cockfight. Not even realizing that you are functioning in the game space. You're functioning in the system. Most people don't get it. Most people think this is just the world. This is just the way the world is. What, 90% of human history wasn't this way? So, I, again, firmly agree. I had um, Roxanne Meadows from the Venus Project. She was giving this idea of a different organization of humanity. And I, and I brought her on because I wanted people to see this idea that, look, this is not the way it has to be. You can have any arrangement of the world you want. I guess my, my thing is I don't know how to wake people up. Like, I don't know how to jar those people and shake those people. I'm like, oh, look at what the fuck is happening to you in the world that you're in. Your world is falling apart. 
<laughs> fucking wrong with you? Like, I don't know how to do that. I can have a conversation with my wife. My, my wife will say, look, I agree with you and all that, but I like Valentine's Day. You understand that this day is not real. It's something that they conjured up out of thin air. I understand that. I still like getting my gifts. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, yes, I understand this isn't real. Yes, I know this is made up. Yes, I know they're doing this in order to kind of come up with some idea for people to spend money on things that they don't need to buy trinkets that doesn't need to exist. I get all of it. You're right. I still want to give. <laughs> I still want my flowers. <laughs> like that's, that's what you believe. And I love my wife to death, but, but, and, but she would agree with me on the political stuff, but my wife still voted for Hillary Clinton. Like I'm making a point that yes, how do you get people out of a system when they've been, everything is ensconced in them? How do you wake them up? So do I use Godzilla to fight King Kong in this? Yes. Yes. So I know, and I think you would agree with me that at the very least, whatever you want to say about Sanders, there are a lot of people today who are more aware of the class discussion in our society than were before Sanders. Oh, absolutely. All right. So if you agree with me on that, that there are a lot of people who use the term woke up. They're like, oh, my God, I didn't realize it was this bad before Sanders. I agree with you. He fell in line with the Russia stuff and that's bringing us closer to war. Um, I agree with you that he did not call out the cheating, which was miserable and difficult to see. I agree with you that my inner child cried when I saw him backing up Hillary Clinton in the election. It's like that woman cheated you. What are you doing? So I, you have my agreement on all of it. You have my agreement on all of it. My feeling, however, is this society is going to crash. Mm. It's going to crash and burn. Yeah. Now, but yes. the only but yes. the only way it crashes and burns with people being having any level of awareness of what's taking place is for them to wake up. Meaning, yeah. I, I don't know how to get the kumbaya moment in the sun outside of having the society where people realize they're being screwed over. And if I can inch that forward by 15%, I'll take it particularly since I know of no other way of getting that 15%. Is that fair? Like, is that a fair, I mean, this sounds like the argument of the reformer and I don't like to use the term reformer because I've used reformer when I, in the context of other people I didn't particularly like who thought voting for Hillary Clinton was fucking awesome. But I made, I, I make a distinction between what at least points me in a particular direction that I wasn't before. And for me, Sanders does that because it, Sanders is the only candidate that's gonna have this conversation about class. Nobody, no one else would touch that topic. Well, you're talking about a wall. Class is a wall. And class, I would argue, is the point that needs to be brought up. That's the point that needs to be hit over and over and over again. It's not about race. It's not about your identity. The issue is class. These other stuff, it's like the other issues that they bring up as kind of political dust and theater. The issue is class. There's only one guy who had that conversation and, and brought people to a certain level of political awareness on that, and that's Sanders. If you want to call him Godzilla, fair enough. <laughs> I wanted to posi position him against King Kong. Mm. Is that fair? Is that fair? Like, assume for the moment that the system is done. This is this is a wrap. It's going to crash. Where do you not like? Where do you want people to have some level of political awareness in that crash to understand what's taking place? And is there any way of getting that outside of using somebody with a political force, whatever you want to call it, of Sanders? Hitting on that thing of the issue is class, issue is class, issue is class. Yes, theater, Russia. Yes, the issue is class, the issue is class. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess it's, it's, I guess where you, you, you are vesting in, 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 in the issues. <laughs> I, I, for me, I look back at the Sanders campaign, something that I only reluctantly supported because I knew yeah. that um, he, um, his record with the military industrial complex and voting for some of the things and funding a lot of things that I don't agree with. So for me, the issue isn't class. For me, the issue has I've been focusing is on empire. We are living in the construct of an empire, which is a predatory system, which, um, which is, is fed by the, this, this whole perception of this hierarchy and, 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 and treating each other in predatory ways so that we, you know, we, have, we, we have these stratified layers of who, is, you know, who has value, who does not have value, who has you know, power, who does not have power. So my thing is more been about how you have a central empowerment of people. You know, which would manifest for me in through more like of a community collectives and um, a perception shift of valuing each other instead of resenting each other. And, and so I, I think we're operating from such like, I'm, I'm trying to get to foundational beliefs beyond just the, um, 
the way it manifests into any economic system because i think what you're going to have until we have some kind of collective evolution of of how we view each other is you are going to keep manifesting this same kind of inequality no matter what kind of economic system you put on top of it you're going to get you're going to get that you're going to get the kings and the queens and the peasants and the serfs it's just going it's played that it's played that way out throughout history so it would be you know really you, 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 it's 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 an awakening to that is a backward premise of the exploitation instead of the empowerment of other people as a means of operating in the world and until you break through that you you may as for a time get policies that may come down because the wrath of the the harmed gets so crazy but it's like every revolution in history you are soon repeating the um the, you know, with, when as soon as the you know the the heads have been chopped by the guillotine, you got 50, 75 years, and it is the exact same thing. And so we've been going. You know, we don't tend to think in these longer term cycles because our life is brief. And but you know, we are we are. This is playing out because of the you know the times and the tech. It's like it's on hyper steroids the pace and the number of people. And so really, I mean, I, believe me, I know I'm Don Quixote tilting at windmills. I know I am like, <laughs> I know that these kind of premises are like, you know, more the stuff of prophets than political commentators, which I don't consider myself a class of. I feel like I'm, you know, just like a bumbling, you know, human in the face of people who have been much greater philo philoso you know, philosophers than I. But for me, when the foundational compass is, I, you know, and I tell about people to bring it to bottom lines. Like what are the bottom line premises that we hold as human beings and individuals that we will operate from? And I'm not talking, I want a pony. And I'm not talking, I rainbow bows and skittles. I'm talking about, I will support nothing that advances an agenda of profiting off the murder and torture and burning of skin of other people for jobs or, 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 or theft or, or empire. I won't support that. I can't support that because it is a bottom line foundational core of whom I am as a human being. And I don't think that's radical. At least it shouldn't be radical. No. Not stealing from other people for my own gain should not be radical. But these are the things, these are the, the we, we see the most basic foundational bottom line ethic. And when you see that as, as an, when you see, see the core, you have nothing left to hold on to, and that's where we are. So that's why all this craziness keeps manifesting. And until we can get back to that, we're not going to be able to manifest anything else. You're talking and about values. So I mean, ultimately, what you're talking about is values. It, it's this idea of, um, yeah, I'm not supporting something that's killing another human being. It's like, oh, my God, she's radical. <laughs> she's radical. Well, it's, not, like, you know, it's, like, oh, it. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, when I'm looking at Sanders and he is literally spewing the lie around Assad. It is a lie. It is a I fairy agree. tale. It is a construct of a war machine so that they can go and drop bombs and, and steal and control geo, you know, I mean, it is a conquest. And I think what the American people don't get and what I've really, I mean, I've always known this at a deeper, uh, at some level, but I haven't known it to the deep level I know now, is we are moving into not that this country hasn't been predatory against its own people and isn't based on, you know, wasn't built on, you know, the slaughter and theft of, of, from other people, but we are facing, we don't have an American power anymore. We have a globalist billionaire power that, that, is, that is outside of U.S. sovereignty. And we are a player on the board now, like those other countries have been players on the board. And if yeah. people don't it's think- 70% like of our military, is in other countries, or seventy percent of the world has our military in it. And, and that, that's just an amazing number, and that doesn't include places where we are, like black sites, where we have no idea that that stuff is there. It's amazing. Like yeah. the, the, they made an argument, um, and I think it saddens me greatly to see lefty <laughs> networks pushing us, like the, the Russia stuff. We attacked. Uh, we're in Syria illegally. Russia and Syria have created an alignment. I keep saying Syria is not on the border of North Carolina. Syria is in another complete part of the globe. And the United States made the argument that, yes, we're in your country illegally. And yes, we also attacked you. But we're complaining about you attacking us while we're in your country illegally. There's no hedge. Like, we have no constitutional authority to do this stuff. It's not like um, 
somebody came up, they declared war, and the United States is you know going from one country to the next. Zero. Like this is off the books in this case. Rand Paul, to his credit, at least in this very specific context, bitched and moaned sitting in the Senate saying, you guys need to make a vote on this because the president essentially running through country to country to country to country without any real constitutional authority. He's using a fig leaf of, of that Bush authorization to do so. That that That's profound. Like, it's hard to get across the, the change in that. At that point, you said, screw laws. We're not a country of laws anymore. The president is going to do what the president wants. And the rest of the world says, okay. That is empire. You're right. Like when, when you're making this argument about empire, you are absolutely right. Just from, I, I don't know another way to, to even call it anything else but empire when you're in the majority of, of, of the world. Um, and you're right about Sanders. I don't like this Russia stuff. I think this is mentally dangerous. I, mean, I think it's profoundly it's dangerous. Not really even about, I mean, they all do it. I mean, you look at Rand Paul and Rand Paul, they do theater to like yeah, to theater. promote themselves. and Because well, Rand Paul, you know, he voted for that tax bill that gave $200 billion of permanent tax cuts a year to foreign investors and the 97% of the American um, tax cuts, you know, are, expire. Yeah, you know, he's so a he's a well Don't get me wrong. I'm not bolstering Ron Paul. He's a no, Rand no, Paul. He's, I, I, no, I know you're not. Like, I'm just saying yeah, yeah, that's, that's, like they, that's not what they do. They do one thing while they, you know, and that is, and, and ultimately, you know, this is wealth. I mean, they have stolen. They, these are these are criminal thug thieves that have that that are that that are playing this system for all it's worth. It's why we have three billionaires who have more wealth than the bottom half of the American people combined. Eight billionaires who have more wealth than the bottom half of the global population behind, like 3.5, 3.7 billion people. This is the kings and the queens and the serfs and the peasants and the slaves. They and they free. want to keep this permanent. <laughs> And you know, he's like, what is their motive? Why do they want to do this? Why do they want to disempower people and keep people in fear and keep people, you know, take away and, and, and be able to monitor us and, and, and uh, control us is because you can only play out to the point of taking so much wealth and, and, and harming people to such a level where even this, 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 this typical theater isn't going to play anymore. And they have been preparing for the next level of when this moves into the open, which is the police state. That does I think that's about Wall Street. Yeah, I think that was, I think, I think, I believe Chris had <laughs> I was scared the hell out of people. Like you had all of these people rising up saying, this is, there's an, a 1%. And like you said, that 1% are the kings and the queens and everybody else is is fighting for scraps and we're done. Now, mind you, they were disorganized. They had this kind of, um, you know, this non-hierarchical thing as opposed to just kind of getting stuff done. But but I think when they started putting through, what is that, that, that authorization bill that allowed them to lock terrorists up in black sites and use the military on a home soil. And you hear that and the public is like, OK, well, I guess we need it. <laughs> like that's, I think I understand what you're saying. I guess my feeling is all of this stuff boils down to a capitalistic thing. Like I understand you're saying base values. But the values are coming from the system. The values are not coming from just human beings being human beings. The system itself is instilling you know, certain people values. are the system. There is no system without the people. People, it's people. It's yeah, us. but they're running into software. It's like if I create a software program and those function in that way. Like then, for for example, Hillary Clinton. Yes, I, I agree with you. Hillary Clinton is a horrible person. But there will be somebody else in Hillary Clinton's slot in this particular system course, because people function on incentives. Right. Yeah. It, it's. I, I guess my feeling is. It is incentive structure. It's fair to say that, yes, it's the people themselves. But let me, it's like, what do people act like in feudal Japan? Well, those people are going to act like, you know, whatever the incentives tell those people to behave like in feudal Japan. What would those people act like if they were on another planet and another alien civilization? Even sure. if they were human beings, they would act in that particular way. They would conform to the, to the measures of the society. People at a certain point are not functioning from a free will standpoint, even though they believe they're conscious human beings. They're functioning under what's being drilled into them, either implicit or explicitly. Yeah. And for all intents and purposes, what are your incentives? Like, what are the things that you're gonna get a kickback for? If you're telling me that I have a billion dollars and I'm an awesome person, well, thank you for the billion dollars. And yeah, I am an awesome person since you guys are telling me I'm an awesome person since I got the billion dollars. If you're telling me that I can get this billion dollars any way that I see fit getting this billion dollars, even if it screws over the public, even if it screws over society, even if it damages the world, like in oil companies, fair game. 
I'm going to get this billion dollars using oil, using animal ag, using whatever means I can get because the society says it's okay. I guess I'm saying these people are functioning almost as software in a system that pushes them to do things. And, and this is not me giving them a free pass. The, at the end of the day, they are doing them. But I, I, I guess my point is the problem is the system. The problem is the way the incentives and the things that guide people's motives in the system itself. It's like, how do you smash that? I, I, I think it's a fair question. I mean, and I'm asking this to you because I, I think you agree with me in the sense of saying this stuff, this thing is broken. And putting a particular politician in that particular position is not necessarily going to fix the fact that this thing is broken. I agree with you. I agree with you. I guess my, my difference is I, I think it's beyond repair. I think it's going to crash. Oh, I don't, I don't think we disagree. I think it's going to crash as well. I guess I don't think is, me and you are me and you are always arguing just out of different sides of our mouth, darling. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I guess my, I, I guess I don't go as far. Maybe that's what it is. I, I I've I've been making this point that working in the way that the system is and and being complicit in it just helps it along. It's like being enablers. And at some point, you need to say no. It's not that saying no is great. It's not that the results of saying no is great. And yes, I understand not putting this guy in office means a maniac is going to get in office. I, I know of no other way to change the system in, within the system itself. Now, all the incentives go towards doing whatever, you know, it's whatever you're compelled to do to make ends meet. It's like, how can you be honest in a system that rewards you for being dishonest? Um, yeah, well, I, I, yeah. I think I've, I've taken... It. Sorry. See, since I, I do, I share, we do share the same belief that this is going to crash because that which is not sustainable cannot sustain. This is not going to work. It is not working. It is, you know, they can put as many numbers on unemployment as they want when you have 90 million adults, and some of those are students and, and, and seniors, but when you have 90 million adults who don't have jobs or and, yeah. and, and a lot of people who do have jobs are working two or three that are paying nothing and they still can't survive, you and can hate only, their jobs, by the way. Of course they yeah, do. And, hate those jobs. And, and, and they're miserable. And it's like you can only you can only tell them that their reality is not the reality for so long. It's like you can only hold the lie so long. So it's gonna break. But so you know, it's fair. It has to get worse for it to change. Well, like, and is, is that I, fair? And instead of it's looking at that as um uh a negative, like oh. You know, it's like, because what we're trying to do is people want to hold on to what is not working and hasn't been working and has been based on very exploitive premises, even if it, when it was wor working for us, the United States yeah. was predatory over a lot of other nations. And to just want to go back to be like, oh, it's cool for us. I want the middle class with the way we were exploiting the rest of the world at the feet of that. That's not cool either. You know, it's like if we can behave like the the wealthy in in, in, the, in those terms of, of that's what we are when the you know you got slaves in the third world, you know, for us it's the same thing. So instead of trying to hold on to that, since it's gonna break anyways, since <laughs> it's going down and this is not gonna hold, then where do we want to move? What do we want to manifest? What who are, who are we as people? What is our bottom line of, of what we think is decent and ethical and, and, and allowable in the world? What vision do we want to manifest? But we don't talk in those terms. We talk in terms of, I want to fight to get this very narrow crumb of a policy of something that is rotting around the edges and breaking anyways, and it's not going to fix it. And you can't even fix it anyways, because you won't address what's really controlling the power and stopping from you for even achieving that. You know, it's like, People, it's it's fear, it's it's um it's 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 the reluctance for change. Human beings will hold on to horrible things to and, and stay in horrible situations rather than face the fear of that. The unknown is our biggest thing. And explain so, it. I mean, they, they would give you an argument for why this is the best approach. <laughs> like the staying in this horrible place is the best approach because of X Y Z. They would give you those arguments. Right. And if we don't come up and start having these discussions now, the kind of stuff that I'm talking about, why I think is important to talk about it is they know how they're going to manipulate the crash. They know what the lies they're going to tell. They know what false hopes they're going to give. They know where they're going to funnel people. And they know how they are going to confine and stand on us. If, and, and people in times of desperation, 
will move to that out of their own fear. So if we cannot get ahead of that and talk about what we're going to do and how we will not go along with that, then that is really, it's, it's a very dangerous time. It's a time. This is why I like this idea of waking people up. Meaning I like, I like the conversation on class. Like I like, um, you know, one of the things during, I think the 2016 primaries where Sanders was making this argument about the billionaires are on our backs and all this other stuff. And you get to see a, gra a vast disparity at the very least on that one particular point, meaning one side of the equation can't talk, have that conversation. Don't talk that way. Wouldn't dare talk that way. You saw Kennedy give his Joe Yuckmouth, I'm not even calling him a Kennedy, gives his argument on, on after Trump's speech. And it's ridiculous. It's as if Democrats haven't learned anything at all because they don't want to learn anything at all. Sanders gives a point by point speech on the things that are wrong in Trump and everything else. I'm saying I like this idea with all his failings. I like this idea of pointing a finger and saying, look, we, your issue is not purely you. Your issue is the system that you're in. And it, the system can be different than what the system is. I like that. Like, I, I, I feel like, I guess I feel like if the ship is going down, I want people to have a different view of what's possible in the world itself if that thing goes down. So at the very, there's some people who can cling to something that's a little bit more than this, you know, totalitarian, totalitarian strong man that's going to be put in place when they start clamping down on people. Um, I guess that's my support for Sanders. It's not because I have this idea of, of ponies and rainbows. I do think that there is a path for the left, for the for the getting something done. I, I mean, you would call it crumbs, but <laughs> something done that's some some relative positive. Because at the end of the day, look, the argument I think that people have, and even when they have a go at me about, is that it's like, dude, you're talking about real people, and it's like I understand we're talking about real people, but also you have to look at the larger context of. It, has it been better for those real people to have society degrade in the way that society has degraded over the past 50, 60 years, doing the things that you've been continuously doing? Or do you try to look at society in a different way and say, I want society to be different? And I have no way of getting to that different society doing the way we're going. I think the X factor in this, though, is this idea of class. I've, I've never heard a politician talk about class. Am I wrong on this? Like, I've, I've never heard a politician bring class up as a discussion and having class in a way where you're having like 20,000 people in an auditorium. Sanders really doesn't that. address class. And, you know, I always felt like with Sanders, I think we have different perspectives on this. I always felt like- it. I'm a fanboy, so go for it. <laughs> I always felt that, that even when I was in the campaign and supporting it, because, you know, I do want basic good things. I have people I love. I got two millennial age children that are struggling. You know, I know, I understand the realities of all this. You know, I, you know, I'm a woman who had her house taken away and lived in poverty and was a teen mom. And I've been, I know the reality of everything that Sanders talks about. And I want those good things so that people aren't in that utter misery that I've, I've been through and I understand what it is. But for me, so much of Sanders campaign seemed to be like, Oh, uh, uh, it was like a, it was like a, a wish for like wanting to go back to when it was good for us, like the fifties and sixties and seventies, you know, when, you know, and not that it was good for everybody. And some people had a bum trip and we all know that. And I don't want to not acknowledge that, but it was much more people, many more people, more elevated having, you know, uh, a higher quality of living. You could be a janitor and buy a house and send your kids to college like my uncle, you know, but I think that since I also believe that this is playing out to its natural end and the things on that which that was built and we didn't address is why it came down. So to try to run back to that and just get a few policy tweaks in the middle of it is not ultimately going to heal it. So, you know, it's, no, it's, it is, Stephen capitalism. you know, it's like, and I don't think you can address the class issue without addressing the empire issue. It is really where the majority of our money goes. It's 60% of our discretionary spending off the top. It's way more than that if you look at the trillions of dollars in terms of special op budgets that don't get included. There's six a loss, by the way. $6.5 trillion from the, this, the defense spending budget alone over the last 15 years. I think there's 21 million in total that have been funneled out in this theft of this budget. So, you know, it's like if you want to talk about class, you need to get in terms of the having that these deeper discussions about wealth sharing and empowering people and getting away from this. Sanders is a capitalist. 
he is in he he is for he is for tweaking and you know giving some you know some more fair pay to the people within the system but he is he is he's 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 very much for maintaining the system itself and very protective yeah, of that. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I mean, he sounds like an FDR Democrat. I, I, this argument that he's a socialist always blew me away. Oh, like, God, hilarious. A socialist. You know, warmongering, you know, like, you know, uh, Lockheed Martin socialist. Yes. Yeah, he, it's like, I that, I heard somebody make this, it's like, that guy's a socialist. And you believe it's like, that guy is not a socialist. That guy's a Democrat. If you look at FDR policies, like classic FDR policies, he's just an FDR Democrat. It, it's just... Democrats have moved so far to the right that the guy who's just what they were looks, you know, at this point they call him a socialist. Um, okay, that's a fair point. And I agree with you on that. I, But again, I think for me, the strongest point for Sanders is not that he's a perfect candidate. I, I, there's a lot of stuff that Sanders does I don't like. I think for me, the strongest point is, can if, if, I, if this bomb is thrown, how many people wake up in the pursuit of this bomb being thrown? And if that bomb is not thrown, how many people wake up? Yeah, it, it's a numbers thing to me. It's 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 not even um for me. It wasn't even important to me whether or not he would be able to affect his agenda. Like Sanders wins the election, he has a Republican agenda. I like this idea, screaming at the top of his lungs about billionaires. I want that to be on America's thing. I want Americans to know that the wealth distribution in the country, because I guarantee they don't know it. Like they have no clue at how much is held at the top versus everyone else. I like having that conversation. I like the conversation being on the agenda. Yeah, I just don't, I don't get you have it by a guy who like shields the establishment who is like the, the epitome of it. I just don't know how you do that. It's so fun because it's foundationally even, dishonest. You can't be like promoting the agents of people, literally stealing the ability of the people to have a voice to move into the system and become their 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 protector and in that way prop it up and then be like I like um for the empowerment of people it's like it's bullshit and that is it's the dishonesty it's the underlying dishonesty i think the core of what we need to get through if we really want to move past all this stuff is to to hold to some basic Truth, and I'm not talking. I mean, I know there's many levels of truth, and there's different truths different people focus on. But I'm talking about how about not just blatant lies, not even getting to like trying to find some ultimate end, and and so you can't be propping up so many components of what is capitalism, and then be like, I, you know, or 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 <laughs> or, 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 or whatever, or, or or this exploitation of people. And then you can't do both. It's like there's no way to do it. And that is, is a very core foundation of why we get no change. Because this is where that, people that's need as a compromise. And th there's certain things you can't compromise without losing the whole thing. And that's that is and, but, and, and but that, that's where we are right now. Compromise is a compromise. It's wholesale sellout. Perfect is not, you know, lesser of two evils isn't evil. It's wholesale evil. That's because that we've been doing it for so long that this is, we've reached the, we've reached a crash of a bottom. So now we need to find that again. I, I, I think I agree with some of that. I think my, my thing is I have no expectation of any of these guys in a political system to be angels. Zero. Oh, Sanders I, included. I think these I guys are politicians. About, it's about us, about what we support. It's not about them. No, in this case, it is about what 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 we support and, and i'm not saying we i mean everybody has their hit their lines but i don't know how to reach the american public like so we've had this conversation about the american public itself being somewhat asleep and you said yourself you wanted to call them idiots or stupid but you didn't do it good on you you're a better person than i am and and but but all of that boils into a frustration of why don't these people wake up why are these people okay with this the bomb that i'm talking about throwing meaning Whatever you want to say of Sanders' flaws, he is saying that. Even if you're saying that the guy is a hypocrite, fair enough. <laughs> but he's saying it. It is getting into the public consciousness in a way that it has never gotten to the public consciousness. I'm saying from an experiential standpoint, what you could say Sanders is a hypocrite. Even if I believe, if I agree with everything that you just said on this, at the end of the day, there are a lot of people here today. There are a lot of people on my channel who are on your channel who said, you know what? I didn't realize it was this bad. I heard this guy in some auditorium. I heard this guy on some television show. I heard this guy on some on YouTube channel, and I liked what he was selling. Now, you could say, yes, he's selling. <laughs> he's selling something. But I'm just making the point that the fact that he's 
bringing it to public attention, even if you want to call him a hypocrite on it, it's bringing to public attention, it's bringing to public ears. And I, I know of no other bomb thrower in a way of, 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 of getting people's attention to this. Now, you can say if those people look deeper, that they realize this guy's just a Democrat. Fair enough. If you want to say that these people look a little deeper and say this Russiagate stuff is nonsense, agree. I, I don't like it. I, I think my issue here is I agree with most of it. I, I guess I disagree on the part of how do you translate that into public awareness? And I feel like even if this guy is is not necessarily the brightest, I don't want to say brightest, bright, I don't mean intelligence on this. Even if he's not the, the best thing in the world in regards to getting things done, and, and you said foundational principles. Fair enough. There are no politicians who you're going to get foundation principles. All these guys are sharks to some degree. What I need to focus on for me is the public. It's like, how, how do I get that across to the public? I can have a show. I can have 100,000 people on my show. But can I translate what I want to get across to the public from the standpoint of a workable point of view, not the end result, the point of view for them to even see the end result? How do I do that? Sanders, he's like the guy understanding your point. The, the guy is is propping up a capitalistic system. You're right, you're right. But this public, for the most part, believes that this system is like air. They don't even realize that they're in the fabric of a system. Somebody who can at least point at and say, "Look, you're in a system, and you're getting screwed over in this particular system that you're in." I think that is vastly important. I, I just don't want to undersell that feature, even though I may take issues with other features. I've done videos trashing Sanders for some of this Russia it's stuff. It's not about Sanders, but it's not about Sanders being a hypocrite. It's about us being hypocrites. We no, I, I, I agree. I, I don't know how to get- I, know, I mean, obviously, Sanders is a hypocrite. All the politicians are a hypocrite. And all the politicians right. lie. But that is, that's my point. It is a really weird thing. That it's like, you know, it was like, okay, okay, we're gonna just start off with the premise that they're just gonna lie to us and it's deception from the get-go. I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> There's the problem right there. Okay. It's like, no, that is the, it's bottom line. Stop yielding that deception is a operating tool for creating solutions. It's not. You can't get there. You have to, you have to create solutions from a foundational pr premise of truth. And when things become manipulations to guard what they they are go going against, it's just like it's it's just a more mind fuckery, you know? It's just it won't no, work. Okay, I understand. I see what's going on. You're you're right. It, but but when people are saying that, like when I say that, I don't Oh God, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. And you, I think you're not. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> weird, but I get what you're saying. You're saying like the audience itself, like the human beings are essentially lying to themselves in the way they're operating around the world. You go, you get a hamburger. Well, they <laughs> had that, that cattle in a pen. They abuse that cattle. They beat the shit out of it. They scared the shit out of it. They made it into a hamburger after torturing, I think, for God knows how long. Really? Now, animal agriculture is one of those things that's destroying yeah. the environment. Yeah. One of I think it's the number two. Absolutely. Now, you eating that hamburger, your society says this hamburger is perfectly okay. There's nothing wrong with doing this. It's fine having this McDonald's, Burger King, Hardee's, Arby's, all these places on, on you know on the strip. That's your society, and your society is telling you that's okay. And your point is, it's not okay. It's problematic. You're destroying the world that you live in, but your society tells you that that's okay. It's yeah. taking this premise of doing things that destroy or hurt is probably bad and not a good idea. Like not, and this is not. This goes beyond what you're saying. Goes beyond um, politics. It goes into, like you said, it's goes somewhat philosophical. But I think your your point is. But there are two points. They're somewhat divergent. The first point is, yes, you're right. If you're operating in a way that doesn't create a sustainable space, you're killing yourself. Which means I don't have to agree with the philosophical or anything else. You're talking about an end result, an end goal. Your system. It's like the philosophical system of it falls apart. Meaning. You're doing things that's destroying the world, destroying the environment, and hurting human beings. It's just from a it's just from an experience standpoint, and just from a living standpoint, the the, philosoph the the philosophical basis of the capitalistic system and the way people live fails just on its own front. It, it fails by its own weight. So yes, I agree with you on that point. It's like stop doing things that are manipulating, hurting, lying. You know what? Are, all those things. Just be earnest in the way that you live your life. I agree. The second point to that is people aren't that way. It's, it's like it's almost like it's like saying, yes, you're right. From a philosophical standpoint, if you're living in a way that's destroying the world that you're living in, you probably should stop living in that way because you're destroying yourself. It's this other part of people saying people don't act that way because people don't act that way. We need some way to, to cajole and get them and to manipulate them into acting a particular way for our ends. You're right. 
it is vastly manipulative for for part of this for this part of the society, the political society, to say that we're going to manipulate people to try to get them to to fall in line with a particular thing because we believe that the world is better if they fall in line for a particular path. It's problematic for people themselves to allow themselves to be manipulated in that way, and in some cases, not even just allow to to, to knowingly say yes, these guys are bought, yes, these guys are corrupt. But yes, I'm also going to stay within the system that I know all of these things take place. Now, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. It, it's, I guess what I feel is I just don't know how to get people out, wake people up. If I, if I knew of some other method, man, I would fundamentally and wholeheartedly agree with you. I would fundamentally and wholeheartedly agree with you. Let, let's move on to the second thing. So the waking people up process. You mentioned in this that it is going to be a scary ride down. <laughs> what does that oh, yeah. But but look, you can also make the case that from a karmic standpoint, we've earned it. I mean, we've lived, ah! high, yeah, we've lived high off the hog of all these other nations. We've been putting in dictators in one nation after the next. We've been taking resources and supplies. We've even during the time where we were talking about like the golden era, where you're talking about like FDR, LBJ, and all these other guys, you're still talking about a functional level of exploitation, either of us or other countries, to get to live that way, to live high off the hog in that way. Um, so you can make an argument that there is a karmic repercussion involved in the way our political system has evolved over time and us being okay with that, being complicit in that, knowing that it was corrupt, knowing that it was bogus, knowing that we were fucking people over, that we were complicit because we got ours. I got my job. I'm good. That person got their job. They're good. No need to look beyond the sheets. Are you saying 60% of the world lives off $10 a day? Yeah, I don't need to know that, man. I'm just focusing on my own thing. I, I, a guy told me one day, he said, government should stay out of helping people. You know, they have charities for that. And it's like, but I'm giving my tax dollars to the stuff. You're telling me that I shouldn't have any say so where my tax dollars go. And if I want my tax dollars to actually deal with poverty so people don't hit me over the head when I come out of whatever particular place that I'm coming out of. Yeah, man, government shouldn't do that. I mean, that's amazing. What does that ride we down look like? Thirty billion dollars a year to, to to feed everybody, but we can spend. We just get another one hundred and sixty five billion dollars to kill people. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? You bring up <laughs> college, you bring up healthcare, you bring up high speed rail, you bring up all these things. You bring up helping people to like like somebody have a kid to give them some kind of stipend or something like that over top of it. All these things you bring up, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. But we could spend a trillion dollars a year on military. That's that's amazing. And like in a blink of an eye, raise the budget by over a hundred trillion dollars. Do you know when Republicans, you would know this, got in office, they screamed and bitched and moaned about Obama. I would die on a flag before raising this, you know, putting one red cent on the back of my kids. Trump gets in office and they raised the debt limit by nine trillion dollars. Blink of an eye. Bam, it's done. Nine trillion dollars. These same guys who were crying about the budget, who were crying about the debt ceiling, all this stuff blink of an eye raises the budget. These things are political games to them. This is just theater. They don't believe in this stuff at all. The whole thing is theater. Both it's sides. theater. What does it look like going down though? And what is that What is that bottom level? Meaning, because I agree with you, at some point we can't keep this up. Like I, I, We can't keep this up. There's no way. I mean, from an environmental standpoint alone, we can't keep this up. We will hit a rock at some point. I, I always use the term, there's an there's a asteroid that's going to hit the planet. And it's like, these people are talking about how much does it cost? There's an asteroid that's about to the planet. You're telling me about your, your fake money that doesn't even exist. What does the bottom look like? And what are the opportunities that you believe present itself at the bottom? Because you said on this show before, like you said, you was like, look, why are we trying to stop the inevitable from taking place? If we know that that inevitable is going to take place, shouldn't we try to focus on things to change it once that takes place? It pre presents an opportunity. It's horrific. But yeah, it does present an opportunity. What's the opportunity and what do you believe it looks like at the bottom or for that matter, even going down? What's the roller coaster ride look like? It's, it's, it's well, it entirely depends on, on how much people are going to be able to open their eyes and not be funneled into the people who are driving this downfall, uh, what, what their agendas are. You know, I mean, it's um, it's it is it's an awakening process. And that's what I've been trying to talk about. Um, we are already in it. We are already in the fall. It's not, it's not like it's coming. It's happening right now. It's happening. Um, we are, you know, we, we face things like, you know, you, people think the monetary system is bad now. Did you see what happened in Greece with the bail-ins? 
where they didn't just rescue the banks. They took people's money out to rescue the banks because when you put your money in a bank, it's you're, you're loaning them money. It's not your money anymore. It's not protected. It is something. And so you have to share in, in, in the risk of the speculations that they do. They, they, they stole people's entire retirements and livelihoods and took them out of the bank. I mean, you know, this is what, what, what are they trying to do? What, well, they've told you what they're trying to do. They've said it. Cheney says it. Bush says it. Obama says it. New world order. New world order. It's a war. And new world order is a corporations and the billionaire owners of these corporations and these wealth families and these kings and queens above sovereign nations. That is what they're doing. And it's, and, and it's so it's like, you know, they're going to sell this as, you know, global currency is, is you know, they're going to sell it in, in, in packages of unity or whatever. But it's a way. Of, like, That's how you sell it. Yeah, it's, it's a, in order to break and get a different currency, they're going to have to break this economy. So people are so desperate, they will accept something that extreme because most people don't want a, a global currency in the United States of America. So they'll yeah. break the economy. You think we've seen depression yet? I mean, they're they're going to they're going to break these kind of things. There are going to be whether people understand what is going on with the theater propaganda or not, there is going to be more theater propaganda and they are going to drive more theater, theater propaganda to create more wars, things happening here that are blamed on other places to get us into an expanded, you know, this to, to expand wherever they else they want to go in their game of risk. They don't want... You know what's wild about that? I, I agree with you on that. When people talk about, um, like, the, the New World Order, they, they attribute that stuff to conspiracy theories. And it's like, why would... It's like billionaires and plutocrats who has conned the world into, for whatever reason, giving them massive amounts of wealth and massive amounts of resources. I mean, it has to be a con. How else do you get that much money? You've convinced the world that resources that in no way belong to you. Like there was nobody here who says, I am bequeathing this to you. You know, ultimately those things were either taken or stolen or they were, they were killed for. But they've convinced an entire world who for the most part, this world should be common heritage that we should have 1% and everybody else should fight over the spoils of, 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 we should have the overwhelming majority of the resources on the planet and you guys should fight over the spoils. They've convinced people of that. Now, if you've convinced people of that, how do you ensure that that doesn't change? Meaning if the world changed, if people said, you know what, we're being robbed. You guys are, you know, we don't believe that you should have this much of the resources. Then it's 99 percent of them and it's one percent of you those people would be able to take what you have so it's like how do you create a system that ensures that that doesn't take place like i think these are just natural forces you if you're a billionaire and you didn't give two shits about anybody else but your own self and you had a friend who's also a billionaire that owned this particular industry and all you guys own these different industries what will you do to ensure the wealth stays with you and to and, and understand that these guys manipulate the political process to their own ends meaning that security state that these lefties are out there pushing now because they, they went after Donald Trump, that security state is also there against you. Like they can strip away your Fourth Amendment. For one of the things that came up that I thought was amazing that lefties ignored completely was this idea of 99.7% of the FISA warrants are approved. Now, they, they dress this up, like you said, propaganda, like this is some kind of court, that there's some case that's being you know argued and there's some defense. No, this is the agent who wants to strip away your Fourth Amendment rights, talking to a judge. And 99.7% of the time, for all intents and purposes, a rubble stamp, the judge says, okay, strip away that person's Fourth Amendment rights. Now, lefties are, are applauding this because it's going after Donald Trump, missing the fact that this is used on Americans. Like, this is targeted at you. And it's not targeted at you because they're going after the wealthy, the rich, the people who have in. No, that's targeted after you, meaning American citizens. They're using those things in the same way they use that stuff on Carter Page, in the same way they use that stuff on Trump. That stuff can be used upon you and elements that they don't particularly like in this government, these, these other forces. I guess my point in this is the police and all those other things are there to protect property, property of people who, for the most part, have means. People mistaking this idea that cops are there for them, like they're there for law and order and all this other stuff. At the end of the day, they're there to protect property. And the people who have property are a very small minority of the population. The people who influence policy and politics are a very small minority of the population. So it's it's natural as could be that if somebody was a top 1% and they own some kind of company, they would use the company to advance their ends, um, that they would use politicians to advance their ends. And if 
people of a country are stupid enough to allow that country to pass something like TISA or the Trans-Pacific Partnership, as you say, they will use those things to weaken the, the sovereign power of those countries, which was exactly what the Trans-Pacific Partnership was going to do. You're right. I mean, I don't think this stuff is a conspiracy. I think these things are natural forces that take place. I, I'm saying when you say New World Order, people will be like, oh, that's some kind of conspiracy. And it's like, well, they, that's, but that, yeah, they just, that, that, I'm not, that's not my words. That's like Joe Biden when he went to Japan to like yeah. show the TPP. That's like, yeah, this stuff they talk about. And George W. Bush. I mean, they use those words. I didn't come up with that term. They came up with the term and it's been used. For, you can just hear it. You can, there's video compilations where you can yeah. just hear, you know, all of them saying it over and over and over again. I think the problem is people don't have those conversations. Like, like you said, there's a wall. And they would hit a certain point and they would be like, well, no, that couldn't happen. No, nobody would do that. No, it's like they're normalized into their way of the world. You know, they get up in the morning, they, they're coin flakes. And so it's hard for them to get uh, the political context on some of the things that people do in order to keep and acquire power. Um, that's the worst part of this, I think. Like, like group thing. Group thing. Well, I mean, you know, it's yeah. a credit to people because people tend to think in terms of like they would think. So most people don't think in terms of a psychopathic, you know, a greed of 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 you know, killing and taking and pillaging for for their daily lives. I mean, it it's it's a it's it's outside of most people's experiences. So it, it, it's it is not something that's intuitive. And, and they don't think that way either. I mean, it's not even given a point of view to think that way. When um, one of the things that came out in the WikiLeaks documents was, and this is just to give this idea of, of the boss or the political point. Well, two things. Richard Nixon, it, there's it tapes where Richard Nixon is having this conversation saying that he's putting a woman up for a position that Richard Nixon knows that woman is not going to get purely for the idea of making sure that she looks bad, that, hey, I'm tricky dick. I did my best to get this woman in office. And this woman clearly wasn't up to getting into the task. And Nixon is laughing at this idea of, ah, not only do I look good by putting up a woman, but I, it also makes it makes it sure that it'll set women back for 10 or 20 years because, you know, yeah. I tried. We tried. Yeah, yeah it, it's like they don't people don't think that way, though. People people like be like, no, there's no way he would do that. That just seems so dickish and, and so horrible and so politically scheming. Yes, they do that. They behave in those ways. When, when when they come out and say, look, we need to attack Libya. We have to. I mean, Gaddafi is going to kill a lot of people. We have to attack Libya to save Gaddafi from killing those people. I mean, it's better that those people die by American bombs because, you know, at the very least, you can replace those bombs and it helps our economy. Um, but we need to do this for humanitarian reasons. And then you find out after a while we read the cables that they were talking about oil, you know, how much oil we can get from Libya and all this other stuff. And Hillary Clinton being concerned about the gold currency. This is the stuff they think about and they do. Now, I guess my issue with this is they 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 propagandize this in a way of saying, look, the United States would never do something intentionally bad. And so if the United States is going into that country, you know, they're doing it for the right reasons. And yeah, Libya is a dumpster fire. I distinctly remember this was years and years and years ago. Um, they were having an argument on MSNBC and still, still, the, the black Republican has made this comment like, have you seen Libya recently? And he was making this point that you guys are chest stumping on Libya. They're open air slave markets in Libya. Like. But but I guess my point is, understand their argument initially. Their argument was, we have humanitarian reasons we need to go into a place. You find out there weren't humanitarian reasons. There were oil production reasons. There were reasons of, of a gold currency. There were reasons of, of, of African, I guess, a change in African influence or the way that Africa is arranged at finan economically. And that's what you find out. The media would never tell you that, would never come up. And now they have open air slave markets. And France, Macron is pissed off because people are like, dude, you went into that country, you destroyed that country, they have open air slave markets. And he's indignant about this. Like, how dare you bring this up to me? These guys, yeah, they are, they're maniacs. They're maniacs. They, yes, they wear suits. They're maniacs. They're homicidal maniacs. Um, and unfortunately, the public is normalized into believing that these guys are just like them. This is one of those Howard Zinn things. It's like these people are not it's not the same. The way that you think the world is and the way you operate is not the same way that these people operate at that level. No, they're mob thugs. They're gangsters. Yeah.
They're punk, thug, mob, gangsters. And, you know, I would recommend people watch, Cor I, I like James Corbett, Corbett of why, um, yeah. why, why uh, Big Oil uh, took over the world and, you know, how Big Oil took over the world and why Big Oil took over the world. If you want to talk about their plans for us, you know, because. You know, but that's, I guess that's are, the point. We are superfluous. We are held in contempt. We are a problem to be managed. And there is no loyalty yes. among the owners of any of this, which are not American sovereign, but a, a global cabal at this point, about how to manage us, how to deal with us, how to disappear with us, how to disappear with us. We are, we are facing that. We are facing, when you realize that every tactic that we have normalized of, of deception to go and murder and thieve and take geopolitical control over these other places will come here. That's just an inevitability. Well, you know, that is the karma. That when, what, over there, we'll come here. And when that happens, it's like this is the phase we are moving into. And um, the, the, the current political, you know, the current politicians and everybody who's serving under this right now is, is blackmailed by it, and they are moving it forward. They are protecting it. When you see Dick Cheney and Bernie Sanders and Lindsey Graham and Gene Shaheen and um, John McCain and Dianne Feinstein all shilling the same neoconservative and neoliberal lie around Russia election interference and Russia threat. They are they, they are they are coalescing around that narrative uh, t for 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 who is really pushing and pu and pulling the strings of power. Um, and people have got to get out of that Republican and Democrat mindset. Um, it is not a political party thing. And it is it is such theater at this point. You know, it's I agree with you on this. I, and I think this is again, I think this stuff is natural forces. I know I keep saying that, but I think it's true. I think people function in the sense of software. Um, no, I was an engineer. So there's that. I, I think in these terms, I think you're right on this, meaning if. Say you start off small, say you're completely unempathetic and you have means for whatever reason, you, you end up with means, you end up with a lot of cash or a lot of status and all this other stuff. And say you have all these industries and as initially you need workers, like you don't have technology in a way where you can essentially eliminate the workers, you need workers. So workers have a certain amount of strength in the political process. You get to the point where you come up with a political system where you have one party that's so off the political map that you can get people to vote for you um, just by being less worse, a little least worse, meaning you still get the things that you want economically because you're still getting tax cuts and all this other stuff while at the same token, you're still attacking workers. And that's essentially what you end up with. At a certain point, though, your technological advancement is going to get to the point where you need workers less and less and less. And then you have a problem. Now you have a lot of people. These people don't really have jobs. And you have this going all over the world where you know, how do you deal with situations where people don't have the capacity to work because they don't need you to work in that space? Um, what do you do with those people? I think like it becomes a practical problem. Now, if at any other time in human history, at least in our human history or, or our political context, meaning the United States and the formation of the states, where excess labor was the society itself said, look, we need to reorganize ourselves in a way to deal with excess labor. If there was any other time where that was done in a positive way, Maybe I would have some hope. I don't have hope on this. I, 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 think, I think what you're getting at is this kind of inevitable end of what do you do with the excess labor when you don't need that labor anymore? And when you have more and more jobs being done from a technological standpoint, take taxis. Uber is in a, is in a court fight with Google over taxis. Now, you, you think of automated cars. Either what, there are a hundred or a few hundred thousand taxi cab drivers all throughout the United States. They would get rid of those drivers overnight if they had the capacity to have automated cars to go from point A to point B. If they could create a device that could attach to a regular car and have that car being powered in some kind of solar powered way, those taxi drivers would lose their jobs tomorrow. It's, not, it's like, what do you do with that labor at that point? And are, oh, am I naive enough to believe that they're not kind of darker paths that people could go to try to come up with things to do with that labor? I am not that naive. I, I, don't, I am somewhat cynical of the political process at this point, especially at who's pulling the strings behind the political process, because I think all this stuff boils down to cash. You have a huge amount of cash. You don't need the labor anymore at the point where you have these things that would allow uh, machines to do that labor. What do you do with that labor? If you don't want to pay your tax dollars. You don't want to give money to that to particular system. 
So wh what methods does your society come up with from the standpoint of politicians who are obsequious to that power space to deal with that labor? I, I agree with you on this. I don't think, I, I think people need to get out of the political context of thinking purely in the sense of Democrats and Republicans and they're in this existential battle because these people believe in things. I, I, don't, I don't think it's that these people believe in things. I think these people are obsequious to a certain power base. Um, and I think they affect the will of that power base, even if that will is somewhat darker in the sense of Americans. I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I can find nothing at all to pick a bone with about that. I totally yeah, agree with you. This is very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to disagree. I, I, don't, um, I don't understand people who say this stuff is like conspiracy or stuff like that. I, I don't get it. it, it I'm not on that wavelength. I, I don't know how you look at any part of American history and think to yourself, um, yeah, man, this couldn't take place or that couldn't happen. Or, or even the things that we do abroad won't necessarily come back. Chris Hedges makes this really good point of they're hollowing out the American infrastructure and all because for the most part, they've, they've gotten the money or they've reaped what they can get out of the American public at the rate that the American public is. Meaning, I don't want to pay you $15 an hour if I can ship this job overseas. I'm just not going to do it. The capitalistic instinct tells me it is better for me from a capitalistic standpoint. I can make more money and more profit off of somebody overseas. Instead of paying them $15, they'll be happy with two because I'm up in their standard of living. But yes, I'm, I'm getting rid of your job. Yeah, I, I think this stuff is just the way the system plays out. And I think we're at this point. I don't necessarily know if you know it's at the end of the system, but definitely you're at a part of the system where more people are getting injured in the natural operation of the system itself. I think poverty is balance. So I, I agree with you on this. Um, you have time for a question or two? Sure. Let's see. Uh, <coughs> if you have any questions, feel free. Well, let me ask you this something else. Is there anything you want to say that I have not asked? I mean, we kind of went along the spectrum, a very specific spectrum of, you know, the hellish scenarios about what we think is going to take place, <laughs> but, but also the political space as, as it is now. And, and even this thing of um, action. Uh, let me say this. People have a go at you for this. They often say that, yeah, it's not actually, you know, same progressive doesn't really want to get anything done. She just want to, you know, stand there with her, or, you know, and stomp her feet and then and the world just revolves around her. I don't think that's true. Yeah. I, I, I think. I think I think you're making a very basic point that says saying no is doing something. You know what I mean? It's like saying I'm not being a part of this is something. That's an action. That's something that's taking place of you pulling uh, yourself out of that political context. I, is that fair? I, I, have, I, I, I mean, if people don't know my background, I have done all of. That. I get we're getting we're getting feedback. Oh, are we? Uh, go ahead. Talk to, for a moment. I don't hear it on my end. Okay. No, it seems better now. Oh, no, it's coming back. Let me try again. Try it one more time. Okay. Well, in any case, if people don't know my background, I have done all of the things that they would consider to be productive since I was 18 years old. I have been a delegate. I've been on the head of the local Democratic boards. I've been, you know, I've, I've, I've led local movements on, on issue-oriented and party politics. I've worked on campaigns. I've done all of it for tw over 20 years, 25 years. And um, I am seeing that we are, and it is that process that has brought me to this point of doing all of the things that people equate with being, you know, effective. We are, we are operating from broken, batshit crazy premises. We will support in our own politicians what we say are things that should be deal breakers. People should be impeached over and fired over and other people. And then we act as if they are concessions when we support them in our own. Yeah, um, we don't look at the deeper issues of what this keeps. And we don't take personal responsibility in, that, in, in the fact of our supporting that. It is what manifests it. And so really to remove yourself from empowering what is propping this up is an incredibly powerful thing to do. Um, it's a different way of thinking, but it doesn't come from me. You know, I've done all that, you know, I've, I've, I, and, and, and I feel like um, it, it never really moved anything forward.
it was just always running in place and maintaining this insane status quo uh, where we're rationalizing staying in an insane status quo out of out of fear. Yeah. And that really that's what lesser of two evils is or or yeah. voting for somebody, hor you know, one horrible over somebody you think may be more. It's all fear. And really to transcend the fear and to move into, into something beyond that is, I think, so is, 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 is really powerful. And it's very individual. It's not the way we think about things. But given the fact that what we do is totally failing and crashing and burning around our feet, it is, I think it's time for these discussions. And I, and I don't view myself as like the best person to lead them or, you know, that I'm some kind of guru or expert somebody just needs to bring it up. I mean, and, and more power to more people who want to come in and, and be putting out different ideas and, and ways of moving forward. I don't think I have all of the answers. I just know that if we continue to hold on to what doesn't work out of fear, we're just going to stay in this trap. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I agree with you. I, I don't, I, I didn't come to the process of um, this doesn't work like kind of overnight. It was, it was this thing of, you guys are running in place. I mean, it, it's the argument of what's considered the left. You can call them the reformist left has been, you know, it's like whether they realize it or not, they only look at this stuff from one political contest at a time and not taking into account the 10, the 20, the 30, 40 year that they've been moving further and further to the right, making the exact same argument one year after the You got to vote for this person. The other guy's a maniac moving further to the right, you got to vote for this person. This other person is a maniac. And it's like not realizing, like not having the sense of self to realize that what you're saying isn't working. Meaning the, the institutions that you believe in, unions are being destroyed or have been destroyed. Um, the left, meaning workers have been destroyed. People are less educated on these ideas of class and workers and all this other stuff. What you're saying from an from a experience standpoint, at least what they're saying hasn't worked. So it makes sense to say, okay, if it hasn't worked, why hasn't it worked? And you start interrogating the system itself. Maybe it's something in the system itself that doesn't work. And maybe continuing and propping up this particular system is not the way to go if you want to get actual change. I, Yeah, we, we I, I think you've been in this far longer than I have. I guess I've hit it at a different place or, or hit my head on this thing in a different place. But I think we've come to this kind of same place. This doesn't work, doing the same thing that we've always done and expecting some kind of different magical result. It's not the way to do it. I guess the thing that people hit on, and they and they rightfully, fair enough, take shots at me on, and I damn sure know they take shots at you on, is what does it mean to say, pull yourself out the political context? Because, because the hard part is that people aren't irrational for, for making this argument of, dude, I don't want that Republican. That guy is batshit crazy. Or that guy wants to bring in gay re, you know, regression therapy as part of the political process in my state, like like these maniacs, like the guy who was um, running for Virginia, I think it was last time before my call off was running, that guy was a religious maniac, literally a religious maniac running in the heart of Virginia, was on board for women having, if they were getting abortions, that those women had to pay, had to look at the baby and had to get a transvaginal ultrasound not for any medical need, but to shame the woman because they wanted to get an abortion. Like these are the maniacs who are running for office. I, I don't think it's insane for somebody to say, I don't want that maniac in office. I don't want that crazy person in office. I think our argument is you have slid further and further to the right. And because you have slid further and further to the right, these guys have gotten more over the top, more batshit crazy. And part of this has to do with not having a fundamental basis of saying no. This is the line that I'm willing to draw in the sand, and this is the place I'm not willing to go. And instead, have allowed the process to move further and further to the right, dragging you along with it, always being able to make the argument of that guy's worse. Speak to that one for a moment, because I think that's a. I, I, I don't think I don't think human beings are insane for looking at their own particular political space in very short terms. Like you said, people you know they normalize certain behavior. And they look at this as saying, this candidate is a little least worse than this candidate. So from a logical standpoint, it's better to pick the guy who's least worse. This guy builds one concentration camp less, is the way Sam Cedar put it. I would vote for the guy who builds one concentration camp less. That, stuff like that. 
explain why that is insane policy. If that's for that matter, it's if you believe it's an insane policy, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But why is it insane to vote for the lesser or the least worse, even when that least worse is doing really horrible things that you don't agree with? Well, there's a couple things going on there. I'm First loaded of all, that question. Sorry. No, I mean. <laughs> um, I, I, for well, there's a couple things. I mean, the, the, first of all, there's a lot of manipulation about what a lot of times people think that their politicians are not doing what the other people's politicians are doing. <laughs> and that is not true. I mean, you know, it's like you look at Obama with 1600 fracking permits off the Gulf Coast introduced rescinding the the drilling off the east and the west coast introduced drilling into the arctic approved 10 times the keystone pipeline the length of the keystone pipeline signed executive orders to expedite the permitting process he's doing everything that they say they're fighting and the democrats do this all the time so they say they're not doing these things but they are and in terms of things like abortion, we had probably one of the largest restrictions of abortion rights under Obama and the Dems through the Orwellian named Unaffordable Care Act, <laughs> the Affordable <laughs> Unaffordable Care Act, um, when they you know, uh, allowed provisions that, that, that uh, the insurance companies would not have to cover if they got a penny of assistance to help purchase an insurance. A woman could, you know, spend 99.99% and you get a penny. It's like, oh, you can't get a policy that covers abortion. So they're like this largest restriction of access to abortion that way. Well, d well, Obama is having uh, ceremonies with Democrats for life celebrating this. And it's like, oh, they want to take away our abortions. Uh, you know, it's like, are you kidding me? The Democrats constantly use women's bodies as bar bartering chips. And it's like, you know, Sanders was just having a rally for somebody who was hideous around that and endorsing him. And it's oh, like, I saw that. Yeah. and it was like, that was should have been a bottom line deal breaker. It's like, no, my body, you know, it's like, you know, it's like women's bodies are not bartering chips that you just give up as like, you know, any other group. If, if, if like that person had been anti, you know, if it was a homophobic or against a certain minority group, Democrats would have gone near it. But the women's bodies with the abortion, you can always put our rights on on the line because it's something that we just do. And I'm so fed up with that. So that's one thing. The Democrats are, 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 are doing the exact same shit. And a lot of times they're more effective because people will accept in a Democrat what they, you know, feign outrage against in a Republican. You know, Obama, yeah. you know, you know the, the hideous things under Obama with the habeas corpus and the claiming right to kill people on American soil and the drones and Terror Tuesdays. Yeah, it's that's like, amazing. I mean, it's like you you are moving the bar so far ahead of what you just said you were, you know. And then um, it's also, it's like, I think you people say that person's crazy. You know, it's like, well, I, I when I'm coming from a place where... I know that these politicians are all voting for, you know, white phosphorus gas that's going to burn off the skin of children. Yeah. And they're going to yeah. go and they're like going to go and like give propaganda to lie and use their voices to deceive and manipulate people into supporting a false premise of, of, of torture and murder. I look at those politicians and they seem every bit as damn crazy to me as that person that you're pointing at. That is okay. as offensive and deeply offensive to who I am as what you just pointed at. And for, for my sake, you are supporting everything as evil as what you just said, because you're going to bargain on that. But that it's like it, it, and that's why we're such hypocrites, because these things that are such horrors that we accept and like, I'll vote for that. That's cool. I mean, any politician, if they took somebody out and, and, and took a baby and poured, poured chemicals, would you ever vote for them because they were lesser? No, but you can do it on a daily basis with war budgets and like the way we operate and that's cool. Yeah. And so it's like, that's why I get pissed at people. We need to find our ethics. And I am so sick of the hypocrisy of like being so superior to the other when we don't even do our own work, you know, keep our own house. That just pisses me off. And, no, and, and lastly, I, and lastly, evil's friggin' evil. I'm not negotiating with evil. 
it's this weird thing that this is normal. Like, it's so bizarre to me that this is normal. Um, yes, I know that guy's lying, but still. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, you just said you know that guy's lying to you. Or um, it's like, like, like worshiping John McCain, like going out saying John McCain is a heroic human being. John McCain is a fucking warmonger who in one situation after the next was perfectly okay with bombing, murdering other human beings. It's it's almost like because they're in government that it somehow makes it okay what they're doing around the world. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 Agreed. 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 Let me see. I like Debbie. She tells it like it is. That's some of your fans. Um, when will the Democratic base, when is it going to realize that the leaders in the party are nothing but undercover Republicans? It just ticks me off that the base keeps voting for the undercover BS. Well, the base is scared. I mean, I, honestly, the base is scared. It, it's it's almost like a hostage situation for all intents and purposes. I don't think it's Stockholm's. Like, I don't think it's, oh, my God, I love these guys. These guys are awesome. I think it's, please protect me from the bad guy. You know, it's like um, Hamas in Israel in that case. It's like. I know these guys aren't great, but at least they're protect. They're fighting, the, you know, these other people. I think that's what it is. I think it's, um, you know, I think blacks are terrified of Republicans because, you know, the, the races jumped into the party. I think all Trump voters are racist, but I think the people who were racist voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. So blacks vote in this way. This goes back 50, 60 years. I think 90 percent of us voted for Hillary Clinton. I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed by that. Like, why are you voting for that woman in mass in this way? Um, they are terrified. They're terrified. I think labor, same thing. They're terrified. They've gotten Republicans to be so over the top against their interests that they are just scared of, of going against Democrats. Uh, Hispanic, same thing. I think you go down the line. I think you have a small sliver of the public, maybe 20 something percent that that are that are, you know, Kool-Aid drinkers that that firmly believe the stuff that's being sold uh, by Democrats and believe that they're somehow different. And, you know, this is me in 2006, where I'm like, you know, Democrats are fucking awesome. What's the, what's the problem? You know, running the people who are like, dude, what is, I ran into a guy who I used to work with. And I think this was during the time where I think Obama was running. And I was like, no, this is, Obama is awesome. I mean, this guy's great. And he says, why, is, why didn't he close Guantanamo Bay? Why didn't he implicate Bush in, in those war crimes? Why is he locking up whistleblowers? Why? And he's creating a scene of cognitive dissonance. I, it's like, wait a minute, what he's telling me is absolutely true. And can my impression of this person be accurate if what he's telling me is absolutely true? If you're telling me that this guy's murdered thousands of civilians and you're telling me how awesome of a guy he is, I just told you he murdered thousands of civilians. Why is that okay? Under what other context would murdering a large number of people be okay? <laughs> Even, like, I don't get it. The majority of the people, there, there were some, some stories where 90% of the bomb strikes that Obama was doing were civilians. Think about that, 90%. You're not even at that point killing terrorists. You're just killing civilians. Like, you're just killing other human beings under this guise of terrorism. You're killing kids, no less, coming up with lies. Saying, well, look, if they're 16 years or older, they're fair game. Some of the stuff that they were doing abroad was absolutely disgusting. And then hiding it within the CIA so people couldn't tell how many bombs and, and people they were being murdered. This is gross. This is gross. Uh, this is what they were doing though. So yes. if I'm talking to somebody and they're Hillary supporters and they're Obama supporters, and they're like, look, I think Obama is awesome. And you start bringing up the people that he was murdering, one or two things will happen. Either they will pretend as if you just said, you know, Obama believes in ponies and unicorns and, and what you just said rolled off my back. Or they would try to explain it away. Well, look, I mean, he didn't have a choice. He had some egg, he had to crack some eggs. You know, he, he was fighting terrorism. They would come up with all these excuses. And you're like, but they were civilians. They were they were civilians. They were other human beings. What if that was your mom or dad? And beyond whether it was your mom or your dad, is it effective? Like, is he actually making more terrorists in the, in the pursuit of the things that he's doing? Now, logic in Washington is this is just the way things are. This is just the way things have to be. If you're president of the United States, you have to murder some people. Otherwise, you're not all that presidential. This is common. Like, the public itself sees this. The public knows this. And the public just takes Washington rhetoric saying, this is just the way things have to be. If we got bombed, do you know, I, I, some of these things annoy me, particularly the, the Russiagate things. And I've made several videos on the Russiagate thing because that, that, more than anything else, annoys the shit out of me in current politics. Jenk Uger, Young Turks, has, has a YouTube show. He's mm. in an argument with Cal Kalinske. And Cal mm. makes the point that they bombed Syrian, Syrian installations. 
uh, that's a big deal. You're, you're talking about Russia being allied with Syria and the United States is bombing Syria. Cenk Uygur said, come on, man. Those weren't real bombings. Like, he's making this argument that these are Nerf bombs. These are not real bombings, or these bombings don't matter. And you flip that over to the context of what if that was us? What if any country, Mexico, Syria, any, pick, pick a pony, bombed us, even if it wasn't necessarily the main jets? And I asked the question, would Cenk Yoga be out there screaming that those were Nerf bombs, that those bombs weren't real, those bombs are not that big of a deal? Yes, they just bombed our airstrip, but who gives a shit about the airstrip that's not that big of a deal? We don't have an honest premise. And looking at the same, looking at the world and saying, we're going to take that they look at things in similar way to us. Meaning if something happens to them, they should react or will react in similar ways to us. And why are we completely underplaying how other people may react to the things that we do in the world? It's, a, it's, a, it's one of those things I agree with you. It's a Howard Zinn, Noam Chomsky foundational premise that the things that we do have effects in the world. And that maybe we should look at those effects being honest. Meaning how will we react if we were in the same situation that we ourselves are, are enforcing upon the world it yeah we don't look at the world that way we, we fundamentally don't look at the world that way vietnam same thing we, we you know the guy uh oh, robert McNamara, rock mcnamara it makes us makes this case that you know we didn't realize that vietnamese had a different point of view that we didn't quite understand and that we didn't take into account that they had been under the boot of france and they thought that we were also just going to be a colonizing force. And so when we came in with a particular point uh, in a particular way, in no way did we take their opinion on how uh, on how they would react um, in the way that we were behaving. We just assumed that these guys were communists and these guys were trying to join a communist government. And we needed to fight communism. So we need to murder a bunch of of, of Vietnamese um, in a country that ultimately didn't matter. We don't look at things in this way. I, I, and when I hear you say foundational premise, that's what I think you're saying. It, it's how do you how would you react in the exact same situation as being pushed across the world? Um, and I don't think we act that way. We we pretend as if people should behave differently because we're the United States. And I have no idea where they get that idea from. No, it's insane. It's totally, totally, totally nuts. Yeah. We act it. like it's normal. I agree with you, man. I agree with you. And I don't mean to name drop people. It's just certain people have annoyed the shit out of me in the way that they've they've gone about this. They they act as if war is not real. Like they act as if that all the precursors to war, like in World War One, World War Two, don't really exist. That that if they were back during those days, they'd be like, that's not that big of a deal. You know, it's yeah, that guy got shot, but that's not really gonna cause any big deal between those things. Well, yeah, Russia is is arming up, but that's not a big of a deal that these feet, that Germany and Russia are are amping up their military forces. I can imagine them being back in those days, having those type of conversations. These guys are putting troops on their borders. NATO have have we've lied to Russia in one instance after the next. And one of those instances is expanding NATO to their borders, and these guys are moving troops, literally moving troops to Russia's border. Russia yeah. is responding in kind. We've killed Syrians. We've Apparently, people have said also kill Russians in these attacks. And these guys are acting as if war is not, you know, it's like, oh, you guys are being hyperbolic saying that we're going to get closer to war. This looks like a war to me. This looks like a situation where one step after the next is getting us embroiled into things that, that have political consequences that take a life of their own. Um, that's what it looks like to me. That's the thing that bugs the shit out of me with, with these guys who are pushing the Trump um, and Russia narrative when they don't necessarily have anything to back that up. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm laughing at some of the, some of the, some of the quotes. Uh, some of my people are uh, comically oriented and can be fucking hilarious, but, that's, but their hilariousness is not a question. All right, my point is that we always say, we show me the evidence. Okay, not that one, not that one. Okay, well, I don't see questions, so I am not going to keep you longer than two hours because I know you don't feel well. I can keep you for, for four hours. Um, but I, I'm going to leave it at that. I think we had a great discussion. I enjoyed this. I, and I try. I, I don't like this idea of debates because I don't want to ever get to the point where it's I'm trying to win this or, or I'm trying to win that. The debate goes into this competition thing with me. I like discussions. And I like, um, I like being able to have this discussion. And I, I do it for a reason. My audience disagrees with me. <laughs> like fundamentally disagree with me. At least part of them, like like fifty percent. 
you have this other 50 percent that would that would say you know that would that would back up this point of sanders or whatever else um but they firmly agree with us on this idea of this system doesn't work the system doesn't work not the way it is and lending power to it is not the way to do it so saying i totally appreciate you coming on to the show thank you very much oh thank you for having me love i hope you hope you feel better get some rest fluids and all this other good stuff and get back to 100 percent so i'm sick of tea <laughs> <laughs> it's like i'm sick of being sick I, to make one last point you mentioned the affordable care act jimmy Dore was on joe rogan he kind of made this point about the affordable care act and i, I did a video making this case that they act like this was universal health care. That's not universal health care. That's not even necessarily affordable health care. You having health insurance is not the same thing as you having affordable health care. Those are very different things. When I was um when I was 17, when I was 17, at 16 actually, I would go to chess tournaments and I would be in a bad from throwing up between games. We had no idea what was causing it, none of that stuff. I went to a doctor on the way home with my mom. We coming from a tournament from uh, a nearby county. And it, it had gotten so bad where she's like, look, I'm going to see what this is. We need to figure this shit out. And, and impatiently stops at a doctor's or at a hospital um, to figure out why is my son continuously getting sick in this way? Why, you know, every three months he's throwing up. Well, why, why, why? Why is this this way? Figure this out. You guys are a hospital. Figure this out. And the guy comes back in the room. He says, you're bulimic, aren't you? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? And I'm, I'm looking at the guy like, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. You... Besides the point, my doctor finally does a blood test when I get back home. And my doctor finds, okay, you have kidney failure. He, he calls me at school and tells me, call your mom and tell your mom that we need to come to the emergency room right away. And he didn't fully explain why. He just said, come to the hospital. Now, this is somewhat freaky. I've known this man for a very long time. He took me in. He doesn't take kids. And he took me in, lost a bunch of weight and all this other stuff with him. Love the guy to death. And him telling me this is this weird feeling of, okay. He's telling clearly he has bad news. <laughs> like, this a, like this would not be a situation where he's gonna say, here's a million bucks, you know, you have a good life. This is clearly okay, some bad shit just took place. I have no idea what this bad shit is. And up until this point in my life, I've had this belief system that anything that's wrong with you medically, the doctor can give you a lollipop and give you a shot, and the world is good. Um, so this is clearly not a lollipop and a shot. This is something else. And my mom thinks I'm joking. Because again, she's also under this illusion that you could have a lollipop and a shot and the world is okay. And he gets us in, we end up in a hospital, and I'm hearing all of these words that I'm bright enough to know what these words mean, but I'm telling myself maybe these are not what these words mean. It's, it's that type of stuff. Going through something like that and having an illness where you're consistently going to the hospital over and over and over, you're having surgeries over and over and over, you have one doctor's appointment after the next, where literally, like with like in every year, there's like two or three major surgeries some cases get to the point of like the brink of death where they're not sure if you're going to live. All those type of things. Having health insurance is great, but having health insurance still ends up with thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. It's like just because you have health care doesn't necessarily mean you don't have health care bills. And if you're going to the hospital or doctor's office over and over and over again, you're getting hit with all of that. Every doctor that comes into your room is a different bill that you're going to get. So the guy who comes in just to take your blood pressure, he's sending you a bill for $200 because he came in to take the blood pressure. The guy who you probably really didn't need, but wanting to be a part of that particular thing because he was getting on the insurance train, he's also going to get a share of that cash. The hospital is going to get a share of the cash. The orthopedic, the, the, the urologist, all of these people are taking a share of the honeypot that is the healthcare system. Because at the end of the day, if you have a, if somebody cuts your finger off, if you lose your finger, you're not going to say, man, eh, fuck it. I don't want to pay that. X amount of money for it. You're going to say, oh my God, put my finger back on and I'll deal with the bills later. They have you over a barrel. And you get a Democratic president after Democrats have been screaming about healthcare for God knows how long and screaming about their values and how much they care about. Oh, we care about our values. We're different than these guys. We're the party that cares. We're the party that gives a shit. These other guys don't. You know, Joe Manchin made this point of saying, we go straight to your heart. <laughs> We're the party. Joe Manchin, right? We Joe Manchin. Um, my point to this is, it, yes, you can make a case that says it's incrementally better, but you cannot make a case to me that it's universal because it was universal. There was still like 20, 30 million people that weren't covered. And people are still getting eaten alive by bills. Well, these guys had the House, they had the Senate, and they had the presidency. They had a filibuster majority proof in that. 
and you ended up with a right wing healthcare plan. <clears throat> I, I, I'm making this case that they've moved so far to the right that what they are accepting as this is the awesome thing, this is the best that we can do, as supposedly the left in this country is a right wing healthcare bill or healthcare plan that is falling apart, that that is increasing rates. Even in the election, before the election, there were rates going up by like 50% in some states, like massive increases. And you've ensconced this thing of a of a pharmaceutical system that can essentially rate the public um, because the public, but because of the Medicare system, they made deals making sure that the Medicare system would not be able to negotiate for drug costs. So when they raise up drug prices by 500% or 1,000%, that's a good capitalist. That's good capitalist. And that good capitalism was allowed by the Obama administration pushing the Affordable Care Act. You can make a case that it's better, but I guess I'm making the case that why are you okay with a party that's essentially pushing something that came from the right wing? Um, and I think it's a fair point to make that if you actually want something different than supporting somebody who's going to do something like that, it's not the way to go about it. So I, I, I get annoyed with these people who um, who point that out as, look at this virtuous thing that these guys did. No, they they made an incremental change. They worked around the edges again to give you something that was incrementally better as opposed to giving you something that's actually better. That if you weren't a coward, if you're willing to actually stand for some bottom line saying, this is the level I'm not willing to go. And if you lose because of that, then fuck, you know, fuck off. That's, that's your bet. I've told you my level that I'm willing to go. I'm not willing to step past this point. The rest is up to you. And well, be willing to stand did, for it. Uh, look what they friggin' did with the whole theater they just did with the, uh, the Republicans and the Democrats fighting over whether we're gonna preserve the Oh, DACA. Care Act. Yeah, no, DACA. the Affordable Care Act. It was, oh, it was the biggest game of theater I've ever seen. The Republicans didn't have a bill. They didn't have a bill. <laughs> I mean, they didn't have anything to even legislate. If people didn't get what that was, that it was the biggest game of good cop, bad cop ever. People hate the current system. They yeah, hate they the current system. We are being, it, it, is a, it is a wealth transfer scheme, literally, where people are paying thousands extra a year to have subpar health care and then still have a risk of bankruptcy. And so what did you see? People declaring victory that we, we, <laughs> we had this private enslavement scheme, you know, wealth enslavement scheme saved. And it's like people are, and that's the fear. It's like, instead of being like, let it fall, let, 50% or 60% of the population not have health insurance. Yeah, it's gonna suck, but you're gonna have that many people suffering over a long period of time, but we're such cowards. I understand it sucks, it's gonna suck temporarily for some people, but it's gonna drag on for years now because they can blackmail us and we succumb to blackmail. And so then we end up, you know, to, 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 to be raped. We're, we're like acting like that's a victory. It's people like you think have, that we're, no, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it, it was just it was just really sick to watch. I mean, that that's this system is so um 30% of the people can't use it if they pay for it because they can't afford the copays and deductibles. And then a lot of people, even like you say, they have bills anyway, so they still end up bankrupt. Yeah. Um, and even if you have insurance, it's like, you know, to, to, to have access is an entirely different thing. It's it's the whole system is completely collapsing, it's a mess. And people, it's fighting to preserve it. It's like, okay, well, we'll take it away from everybody, and then maybe you know, because it's going to take a crisis. And so I, I mean, I, I wasn't always popular, but it's like, what do you want? Do you want a crisis now, which maybe will facilitate the the country finally standing up to stop being exploited in this way, or you want to have, you know, the same amount of harm over a much longer period of time, 10, 15, 20 years, as people hang on by their fingernails. It's yeah. a and we don't say that lightly, by the way. Like I, people think that you know, it's like, dude, you're in a room somewhere, and you guys are saying that lightly. People are going to be hurt. It is not said lightly. It, it, it no. it's it's immensely felt. Yeah, it's immensely felt. It's just a difference in in trying to accomplish your goals. It's like, you, I think if we were looking at if a head in a jar, I always use that analogy. If you put a head in a jar and you ask some questions, what would they say? Not necessarily the pressures that are acting on them. I think you and I would want something similar. It's like universal healthcare. It's not having this game, not having this thing of, um, like for instance, nobody. there's nobody in their right mind that believes that Obama looked at the situation and said, what is the best healthcare plan that we can come up with? And let's find a technocratic answer to make sure that people, 
are the center of the healthcare system in the American public. He didn't do that at all. He was like, how do I protect health insurance companies? It is important to me to protect health insurance companies. I need to protect health insurance companies like I protected Wall Street. Like that is such a bizarre thing that the thing that, that this is supposed to be about human beings and, and the conversation that really boiled down to is how do we protect healthcare insurance companies? It's this weird utopian fantasy that you can somehow serve both masters. Um, when really you only end up serving one. Yep. You only end up serving one. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I agree. All right. Thank you very much for coming on, Debbie. I absolutely appreciate this. And feel better, please. <laughs> feel better. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe. <laughs> you guys can always support through Patreon. And, guys, again, thank Debbie. And send her your best get well wishes. And we...